Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Professor Stefano Gualeni from the University of Malta, and this is Are We the Baddies? In case you want to follow my academic adventures, you can use this Twitter handle. So, Are We the Baddies? This is the title of the talk, or better, it was to be the title of the talk. Then I thought to myself, maybe this is not very clear or maybe ambiguous for some of the audience or can be associated with unsavory memes on the internet. So I decided maybe that's not the greatest idea. Instead, I decided to title it Are we going to be the oppressors of morally relevant artificial beings in virtual worlds? As you can tell, this is not as catchy and it's quite a mouthful, uh, but perhaps it highlights more precisely what I talk about in this 2020 paper of mine. Uh, in this article, I explore whether and under which circumstances it would be ethically valuable to include artificial beings worthy of moral consideration in virtual environments. In particular, my article focuses on virtual environments such as those of digital games and training simulations. As uh, interactive and persistent digital artifacts designed to fulfill specific human purposes, such as entertainment, education, training or persuasion. As you can tell also from, from the typography and the color here, the question, the notion of moral relevance is central to this question. So how do I treat moral relevance in this presentation and in my article? Well, I align with Eric Anili's 2014 paper, Machines and the Moral Community. In this work of hers, she talks about morally uh, relevant beings as beings that can express specific interest in preserving their own autonomy and bodily integrity, that is to say the possibility for them to continue their existence undisturbed and unharmed. As you can tell, my paper sets out on a speculative task. Uh, it imagines a future in which we can technically create artificial agents that can be considered to be morally relevant according to the previous definition. Once it's done that, it asks the question, could it ever be ethically viable to use those agents in virtual worlds such as the one we are currently designing and using? Obviously, I'm not to invent a new ethical framework. What I did in this paper is um, leveraging existing approaches that were in a, to a degree similar to the one I was trying to um, develop. Uh, the first is the theme of animal oppression and the moral status of non-human animals. Second is the ethical question concerning parenthood and procreation. And last but not least, uh, the classical problem of evil. And so, let's start from the first one, animal oppression. In general, philosophical questions concerning animal oppression ask the questions of whether we should include animals in our moral community, as are they morally relevant for us? And second, whether it's always wrong to oppress morally relevant beings. Obviously, if we take the, the former stance, uh, what, we, what we figure out is that if we answer yes to both questions, it would be completely impossible, or rather, completely immoral for us to um, uh, oppress, use, um, experiment on animals, and so on and so forth. But is that always the case? Well, according to the utilitarian position, which is often associated and championed by uh, philosopher Peter Singer, this is not always the case. Um, for example, according to Peter Singer, the damage caused to these beings, so animals that we consider uh, morally re relevant, but uh, we still oppress, kill, eat, and so on, uh, might be an acceptable price to pay for the achievement of wider and more pressing goals for the moral community. In other words, what Singer does is set up the problem as of competing moral claims. If we do not, however, embrace a utilitarian perspective, then violating this autonomy is almost by definition wrong, right? If we consider them to be morally relevant and we can avoid hurting them, uh, then probably we shouldn't. And the same goes for artificial beings that are not animals, for example, perhaps morally relevant artificial intelligences. 
if we ever were to consider them to be morally relevant, then it would follow that we shouldn't hurt them, we shouldn't limit their autonomy, we shouldn't stunt their interest in keeping alive and well. The second perspective that I want to um, engage with in this quick talk is that of parenthood and procreation. Obviously, there's a lot of work in the field of ethics uh, with parenthood and procreation asking questions such as um, is it ethical to generate children that might be better off if you made other decisions? Or is it morally wrong for people to choose to reproduce when they have reason to believe that their children will live in a way that the potential parents deem suboptimal? Think, for example, of being born into slavery or being born with a congenital uh, defect and so on and so forth. So should we still give birth to these children? Clearly, I'm not necessarily addressing this from the points of view of humans, but you'll see where I'm going with this. Where I'm going with this is that, yes, a bunch of different perspectives already exist in classical philosophy and ethics about that, but we hardly ever ask the question when we uh, confront developers. The question is perhaps even more important uh, with developers because from a moral standpoint the creation of artificial moral intelligences might be even more problematic than becoming a parent. It could be argued, in fact, that software developers have a higher degree of control over their creations than parents have in human biological reproduction. Think about it. As digital creators, software developers can make decisions concerning the production of both the virtual environments and the autonomous beings that would live in it. Whereas parents can at best play an active role in the production of the child. Moreover, the developers are cognizant that their creation in the virtual worlds that we're currently using and creating right now are going to, in a way, suffer. They're not going to be autonomous. They're going to be um, forced into routines and into tasks that are not necessarily autotelic. They're not for their own sake, but they're oriented towards the needs of humans. In other words, the developers of those intelligences are also cognizant that their creations uh, will be bound to a virtual existence characterized by a large degree of suffering. They will be forced in activities that are currently repetitive, non-autonomous and dissatisfactory. It is a kind of slavery that is not unlike the captivity of suffered by, for example, circus animals. In this situation, similar to the previous one, if we apply this point of view to the creation of artificial beings instead of biological children, it would be unethical and non-acceptable to, in a way, bring them into existence. So it seems there's not many positive outcomes for my question. The third and last scenario deals with the classical problem of evil of um, philosophy, of ethics more specifically. And, uh, well, it is a bit complicated, and so I will not go into detail in this presentation. However, I invite you to read the argument in the paper. Spoiler alert, we are once again confronted with the idea that, if we are willing to adopt a sufficiently large conceptualization of a moral community, then including artificial intelligences in virtual environment um, would not be morally permissible, especially when these environments are designed for humans' uses and goals. So, Again, it seems that all the ethical perspectives that already exist would suggest that no, we cannot just put artificial, intelligence in, artificial intelligences into our existing or in the current way we develop virtual worlds. Is there any upside? Is there any possible scenario in which this is viable? This is more or less the key question of my, of my talk today. And I want to propose a possible answer that is also contained in my 2020 paper. So the paper here proposes as a possible solution a variation of a contractualistic position. In this ideal solution, artificial intelligences could be presented with access to information and characteristic of virtual environments before joining into the activities, together with information about the activities that would take place together with humans in those spaces. In this scenario, they would be given the possibility to decide autonomously whether to take part in the world in question and to the activities in question and also when to abandon either. In this possible answer, the artificial agents that we're talking about would not be in a condition of slavery. 
Instead, they would be allowed to act in virtual environments with levels of knowledge and autonomy that are comparable to those of the human users. Interesting, huh? So in this speculative answer, autonomous artificial intelligences would relate to virtual environments not only as moral agents, but also effectively as existential subjects. This is like a key interesting takeaway. So we need to start treating them as something more than even just moral agents. This might seem paradoxical now, but uh, for now I want to thank you for your attention. In the paper all of these arguments are detailed and better explained, of course. And if you're interested in reading that paper or other papers in technology, philosophy of technology and technoethics, you can go on my website, which you see in a slide right now. Again, I work at the University of Malta. I sometimes make games and write a lot of papers on this topic, so it might be interesting for you to follow and perhaps write to me about what you think and where I'm wrong. Again, thank you very much for your attention and until the next video. Thanks.